Dude, are you serious right now? Oh, oh, you're okay. What's up, YouTube? Man, am I excited? We're about to do an awesome reptile room tour over here at Lone Star Reptiles. Earl's gonna show us all his collection and show us some crazy, crazy beaded lizard and gila monsters. I'm so excited. I've been wanting to do this tour for quite some time now, and we're about to do it right now. So, guys, let's get to it. So, we're here with the man himself, Earl. Dude, I want to tell you, first of all, thank you, man, for giving us a tour of this awesome stuff. And could you give us a quick little rundown on what you have over here? Because you were saying, like, this is one of your nastiest snakes, right? Okay, so this is a blacktail rattlesnake, and, I mean, he is just super nasty. Uh, the day he was picked up for me, they said, oh, he's super gentle. Well, it was like 40 degrees outside. And so when I brought him in here, it was cold when he got here, and he was really docile. The next day, I went to pull him out, and he is nasty. I mean, he spits venom when he comes at you. Oh, uh, He's about four feet, and uh, just four feet of nastiness. All right, so these are banded rock rattlesnakes. This is a breeding pair. Uh, they did mate this year. However, I think I had them a little too warm, so we didn't actually get any babies out of them. So we're going to cool them down this next year. This is a uh, tiger rattlesnake. This thing is one of the most beautiful rattlesnakes out there. It's actually pink. Uh, it's hard to see it through this glass, but she is pink. And in this one, there's a funny story to this one. This is just a uh, Western Diamondback. But I brought a rattlesnake in that I caught on a, a well site, and she just happened to be pregnant. And the very next morning, I had 14 babies in the cage. Wow. And this is one of the babies. And who's this big guy right here? This is my beaded lizard. He's, he is uh, full grown. Uh, Are you really going to take him out right now? Absolutely. Uh, Harry? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'll be uh, he's a little cantankerous, so. Wow. Dude, are you serious right now? Uh, hold on. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. What <laughs> in the hell, dude? <laughs> Oh my gosh. This is a full grown male also. This is full grown? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's uh, 10 years old. So the beaded are way bigger than oh, the gillas. Yes. Yeah. So this is the only venomous lizard in the US. And then this one's out of Mexico. Uh, wow. but there's only two venomous lizards in the world. Unless they reclassify the Komodo dragon as a venomous. One of the most awesome creatures ever. Uh, I sit him on my lap watching TV. Are you serious? Yeah. So are these more docile than the beaded? They are a lot more docile. They they can bite, all right? But, you know, with a little work, I mean, this one's had a lot of work, of course. Uh, you know, and I don't promote handling stuff all the time. I mean, you know, the thing is, these are venomous. So if they do bite, you know, they can hurt you. It won't kill you. Yeah, but I heard you kind of almost want to die that the pain's so bad. So. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very painful bite. So the best way of holding is, would you say putting your, like, I just, he'll still reach you, right? I reach under him, and I put my finger right there. We're cowboys. Let me, let me yeah, show I'm, you. A, I'm a really hurt cowboy right now. <laughs> my reaction time is... Hey, hold on a second. We're going to get it right. Take that damn hat off. Oh, yeah. Take that hat Come off. Come on, Kerry. We're we going to get it right. Okay. Here you go. Now, we're a real cowboy. All right. Put your finger right up under his neck. Put, put your finger just like I got mine. Put this finger right there mm -hmm. and wrap around. All right, now look up at the camera and smile. Hey, right, dude. Now you a badass. Yeah, Yeehaw. dude. Yeehaw. <laughs> Yeehaw. Right. Yeehaw. You just grew up, dude. Oh. Could you make him taller? This is no, we can't make him taller. <laughs> like this is nuts. Wow, man. That, that is honestly insane. And then, and then we got all this noise in the background, too. That's a cool oh. part. All these rattlers. That is badass, dude. What you doing, buddy, huh? Look at this thing, man. I've never seen the red one. Well, in person. He's he's a heavy beast. Wow. He's in brumation right now, so I just woke him up. But I didn't even know he came out Friday night, but they come in here and got him out. These are red-eyed crocodile skinks. Red-eyed crocodile skinks. And we got the male and female right here. Oh, dude. Oh, those are little things that look like real dragons. Yes. All right, settle down. Settle down. 
Dude. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, man. They're, they're really cool. And these things bite too, but there we go. I just learned something crazy about these red eye. what are they called? Dragon skinks? Red eyed crocodile skinks. Red eyed crocodile skinks, man. This, this is insane, man. What were you telling us about this? Okay, so this is the baby red eyed crocodile skink. And so the skinks lay one egg at a time. And if you take them out, you can hatch them on your own. And then six weeks later, they'll lay another egg. However, if you let them hatch them on their own, they incubate their own eggs. They're maternal. So when the baby hatches, they'll come out, get the food, and take it back to the baby. And otherwise, you're going to be feeding this little baby with little tweezers trying to put stuff in their mouth because you got to get them started. So kind of like birds, right? Kinda little like baby birds. birds. So they take care of them themselves, and you don't have to. He's about ready to move out to his own cage, and so we got him a new cage. And they're about to lay another egg, so... Unfortunately, they lay one egg at a time. So we're gonna bring in about 30 pair of these so we can get a bunch of them at a time. All right, so Earl, so not only do you have reptiles, man, but uh, what is that little thing over there? Okay, so we have one mammal, and uh, this is a Cotamundi. Cotamundi. This is Roscoe, and Roscoe is, is an awesome little guy. Oh my gosh. What are you doing, buddy? Uh, Dude, he is so cool. Where do these come from? Okay, so he's out of Brazil. He's in the mountainous regions of Brazil. And I actually brought him home from a zoo. Uh, he was in the, the petting zoo for little kids and he bit a little girl. I mean, he was like four weeks old. And so if they ever bite, they can't keep him. And so they asked me if I wanted him and I brought him home. Oh, uh, dude, that's awesome, man. I bottle fed him and, and he's super, super gentle. So look, I'm holding this little Cota Mundi, Roscoe. Earl, again, man, big thank you, dude. I didn't even think I was gonna be able to hold this little guy, man. Such a beautiful little dude. But I'm gonna give him back to you because he's been a little too uh, <laughs> crazy already. I did have it recorded already, but the homie um, Harrison didn't put the mic on, so <laughs> I'll show you a little more foot. <laughs> I'll show you a little more footage right now, but with no volume, just some really cool music. <laughs> All right, so Earl's about to show us why Roscoe really, really loves them. What do you call these things? We, we call these crack pellets because he looks pellets. like a little crackhead when you bring them out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Roscoe, come here. Oh my gosh. That's why you love Daddy Earl. He just grabs them with his hand. Here. Here's your hands a little bit. Just hold your hand out and he'll reach through and grab them. Here. That is so right. insane. Make him reach out and grab him though. There you go. All right, guys, we're about to get to the part where I'm more familiar with, but uh, Earl over here is going to take us to his snake room where he does have a lot of ball pythons, correct? Yeah, we got ball pythons, retakes, berms. Oh man, yeah, but everything. All right, Earl. So here's where all the magic happens, right? Absolutely, dude. Let me tell you right, right off the bat, man. Your setup is freaking amazing, dude. Well, it's a little dirty because we've been cleaning a little bit last night. Man, every time you say when it's a little dirty, I just stop <laughs> to think like, man, if you get to my place, you'd be like, it's a lot dirty, dude. But man, dude, this setup is beautiful, man. Thank you. So what do we have here? I mean, what, where do you want to start off with, real quick? And actually, before we start, the man, how long have you been doing this? And like. If there's any pointers that you could give with your experience, you know, it'd be great. really great to hear. So I've been doing this about 12 years, and one of the biggest things I, I can point out to people is, is take your time. You don't have to rush anything. This is not rocket science, but again, it's not a race. You know, we're not all trying to get to some point. And, and follow your own dreams. Don't chase everybody else's, you know. Uh, I see it all the time, you know, I want to make this because this guy made it. Dude, go your own direction and try to make something cool that nobody else has done. Uh, we've done several projects that nobody else has done and it's awesome feeling. That's that's the best advice I can give you. How much, how, how much snakes do you have your total? I, I don't even know. I, I, I let 82 of them go on Friday night, so Woo! I don't know how many's in here right now. I mean, I would uh, say, what, like around three to four hundred? 
Yeah. More? Five. Five? Hi, Harry. Don't be hiding, Harry. Hey. Oh, it's a little off. <laughs> so, you, you want to show us some cool, your cool stuff, man? I mean, what are your, some of your projects that you're working on that are like to you that you're excited about? Okay, so the Scaleless project is one of the biggest projects, and I know you're into the Scaleless stuff. Um, but there was three or four of us that got into it really, really early. I got a late start because I made all males the first year, and I didn't make any females. Um, but I, I did, I was, able, to me. I was able to produce <laughs> the very first Super Fire that was debuted in uh, Tinley in October, and that was a hit at the show. Uh, it's not here, it's at Daniel's place right now. Uh, but this is a Firefly. Oh, wow. And these are really wow. near and dear to my heart. Dude, yours are, that is super clean, dude. What do you keep them on? I keep them on paper towels. Only paper towels. Uh, Dude, I'm not gonna lie, man. That's why the cleanest looking scale is like I've seen. And here's, and this is just, just a fire. Holy hell. And these just shed on Thursday, both of them did, so. Uh, and I'm not having the shedding problems everybody's talking about. I, you know, I mean, you can feel the humidity in this room. Yeah. yeah. I'm what drawing. I'm drawing out humidity. All right. So here's the thing that, that I kind of made a mistake on when I built this room. I had no humidity in my last building. It had a concrete floor like yours. It sucks humidity out. So I built this on a pier and beam. It's got nine inches of insulation. This is a rubber floor. It's not wood. And then the walls were coated with Rhino bed liner, textured and painted. So this is a rubber room. Therefore, we have about 85% humidity at any given time. And it's I not going to mess anything up. Yeah. And I am actually drawing humidity out right now. I pull out about 45 to 50 liters of water a day out of this dehumidifier. <laughs> what? You learn something every day, dude. <laughs> the last building, I had three humidifiers putting humidity in and couldn't yeah. keep it up. Now I'm having to pull it out. Dude. During breeding season, it's really hard because when you drop temperatures, you want the humidity to fall with it. Otherwise, you can have res respiratory infections and stuff like that. In the summertime, who cares? Let it be as hot as you yeah. can here. Uh, so the Scaleless Project is probably one of my, my favorite of all. The one everybody knows is, this is the Dark Wonder Project. Now these are heads, these are double heads, so they're double head for albino dark wonder. And if you look at this, it's a normal, but look at the iridescence in this snake. Yep. Even the heads what? have Dude, the iridescence. Crazy. And it doesn't matter what gene it is, it will have the iridescence. So we'll go to a Mojave version. And you've got the iridescence on the Mojaves. <laughs> Dude, that is look sick. Look at the head. I mean, that is just sick, dude. And it doesn't matter, like I said, any head What's that, that I What's that called, have, the Dark Wonder? It is the Dark Wonder gene. Now we'll look at the actual Dark Wonder. Oh, shit. This is a visual dark wonder. Wow. And let's, let's actually take this outside in the sunlight so you can really see it. Look at the iridescence on this. Purples, greens, blues. I mean, this thing is crazy. Look at that head. It's almost... Dude, I love the name. Like, like it's in, it fits it perfect. Okay, this is a recessive gene. Uh, now, I've never even heard of this. So are, you, are you the one working with it? I, as far as I know, I, I haven't found anybody else in the U.S. with it right now, and I don't know why, but uh, I am working with some guys in the, in the U.K. That, that are working with it. I think they're going the wrong way with it. They're going all light jeans, bananas. So this is the only one of the only spiders you have in your um, Yeah, I don't collection? have much spider left because we're kind of phasing the spider gene out for obvious reasons. This thing's beautiful, though, man. Is it just, what is it? It's just a bumblebee. Wow. So now, I have to ask you this, just real, real quick. I have to ask you. Um, why are you using, uh, what is this, mulch? It's Aspen. Aspen? Yeah. Okay, so we use Aspen only because we have 85 to 90% humidity in this room. And I like the fact that RepiChip looks cleaner, there's less dust. However, if I was to put RepiChip in here, I would be like New Orleans. I mean, Super the humidity humid. would be just terrible. And so with the dehumidifiers and the Aspen, we're drawing the humidity out. Uh, I know you sell Rep Chip and I'm happy for you, but you're not going to get none of my money. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> real quick, real quick. My brother sells Rep Chip. <laughs> we have Aspen. <laughs> nice. <No, he's not. laughs> 
Uh, right, so I, I, do, I do use uh, Repti Chip, Pro Cocoa, what, whatever I can buy at the time on my venomous stuff. Okay, awesome. Because uh, that's in the house. Can we check out some other cool steaks? Because I know people are going to be wanting to see what other cool stuff you have here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to hand it to you and you tell me what it is. Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it's an Asian. Right. I know it. So uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to hand you something else that you can kind of... Lemon Blast. Wow. Lemon Blast Clown. Lemon Blast Beautiful? Oh, thank you. It's a Lemon, it's a lemon Blast Clown. It's a Lemon Blast Inchy Clown. Oh. Wow. You would have never thought Inchy would have done that. Oh. If you, if, if you look at the patterns, it's the same exact pattern, just it's muted. And it's orange on this one. Dude. See, I haven't that's, seen anything like this. That's a simple this. combo, and nobody's went that far with it because it's too simple. No, real quick, or I need to ask this real quick before, I don't want to even say this towards the end. If anybody wants to reach out to you, to, I mean, because you obviously have some stuff that nobody really plays with, you know? And this is what, I was doing a vlog just recently about it, about going to other places, you know, and different projects from different places, different yourself. people, and you know, follow your own, you know, your yeah, own road. Just make your, make your own road. Now, what would be the best place for people to reach out to you? Would it be your Facebook? Would it be your Instagram? Would it be an email, website? Uh, you can go to my, call me. 817-213-7575 or go to our Instagram. Instagram, which will be a Lone Star Reptiles, Lone Star right? Reptiles, yes. Dude, that is sauce. Because I mean, we're going to still check out some other snakes, but I just want to throw that out there because I know a lot of people are going to be hitting you up, man. All right, so what do, you what do we have right here? It's a Mahogany Pastel Clown, breeder male. Oh, man, and I bet he's done some work here. I put him to uh, albino. I put him to pied. Uh, I'm using him just to make double heads this year. Nice. Uh, and I did put him to a couple heads. All right, so you have this, uh, you have this gene here, this a uh, fire gene here, right? Yeah, we we brought our own fire in back in 2010, and it's the LSR fire. So, super super bright. That's major just the base morph. Fire. That's just the base just, gene. Just a fire. What? Now let's just go show you what a regular okay. fire looks like. And there's your regular fire. Honestly, that looks like a desert ghost in a way. <laughs> All right, single gene fire. All right, so now we'll look at a couple combos with it. Oh man, I'm stoked and, about this. Uh, and it, remember the head stamp. Yeah. Because it's very apparent on the LSR stuff. All right, so. Oh, oh. <gasps> that thing is man. popping, dude. But remember the head stamp. Yep. It shows up on all of them. All right, let's go a little crazier. I want to say that LSR stands for Lone Star Reptile yep. Fire. Got it. I'm smart. All right, so here's an LSR <laughs> Firefly Leopard, and he don't want to act right. All right, look at this head stamp. Still got that diamond that's, shape to it. That's like its trade, its trademark. Wow. Now look at how crazy this this thing turned out. I'll tell you right now that both the combos is popping out the colors a lot better. That is an LSR Firefly pin. No it's desert ghost. No desert ghost. No desert ghost. All right, what do we have right here? Oh man, and it's in shed too. Look at the eye stripes. Way up over the eyes. Wow. It's possible cryptic, but that's the only desert ghost I have and it's never been bred. Now, are you selling any of the Alice Star Fire stuff yet? I am. Uh, I actually have a couple hit for clowns available right now. These are the prettiest freaking... And remember the head stamps. And the, and the more they shed, the brighter they get. Guys, I honestly inquire about these bad boys ASAP, man. LSR Firefly Leopard. And I have two of these available. Guys, I'm telling you, man. You guys got to get on this ASAP. Over time, the more this thing sheds, the brighter it gets. Now, look. I have some, some full-size uh, Fireflies, and they look nothing like that. This thing just gets brighter and brighter every time it sheds. Dude, that is insane. This is an African import that I brought in, and we thought it was vanilla. I bred it to a normal, a pastel, and a fire, because I wanted a vanilla cream. The pastels come out looking like that, and he was like, that don't look like a vanilla pastel, but okay. Yeah. Then I hit the super fire, and it was like, this is not vanilla. So we held everything back, and we're finally, I mean, there's been a few released over the years, but not many. Uh, just single gene stuff. Now we're actually selling some heads and some, you know, multi gene stuff. Jump on it, guys. I'm telling you. All right, Earl. Thank you very much, man, for showing us all your awesome stuff. Again, man, I'm going to put all his information in the description down below for all of his ball pythons and all his 
all the stuff you can check out on his was it Facebook or Facebook, just call you directly. Instagram. Yeah. Again, do I want to tell you, man? Best way. Dude, thank you very much, man. Uh, guys, till next time. Peace.